Hi, my name is Emily. Today we're here at South Florida Shooting Club. We've got Brad Kidd, national champion. We've got David Radulovich, VTAS world champion. Today we're gonna to be comparing some of their similarities and some of their differences, how they think through the different shots. All right, here we've got a spring and teal. Brad, talk us through how you would approach springing teals. Yeah, with a, with a teal like this or with any narrow quarter and shot, I'm going to make sure I get my whole point very tight, jammed up. I want that bird to get by me. I want to chase it down from the backside. I don't want to get lost out in front of that bird is one of my big keys. The, the important thing when you're going to get jammed and let the bird pass you is not to panic. You want to stay very calm, very relaxed. You're not looking to move fast. I like to think of my movement as relaxed but reactive, immediate and direct. Okay, so is your, are you looking to the side and watching it come up? You're starting underneath it. Well, what happens when you bring your whole point down, you're getting the gun out of the way. David and I shoot a little different. His okay. head's a little higher on the gun than I, than I am, so he can see through the gun a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is get the gun down to be able to see the bird as opposed where David can see through the gun better, so he has a better opportunity to stay on top to see okay. the target, yeah. Okay. What about you? Walk us through how you would approach a springing tail. Right. So the difference that the thing I'm doing differently from Brad is essentially I'm staying up higher on the line. Okay. I'm supplementing a lot of physical movement with m more eye work. Okay. So as Brad said, because my eye is higher off the gun, I can see through the gun better. Uh, and look, basically, I'm sitting up right above the target, looking through it, allowing the target to come up to me and making a short connected move at the end with the change in my posture and pulling the trigger as the target kind of comes into my gun. All right, let's see. Brad first. You got it. We're gonna take a look at a view bird here and I'm gonna see if I can figure out my pickup points, where I'm gonna start my eyes, where I'm gonna start my gun for this shot. Pull. By getting my hand out there, I could kind of feel or simulate having the gun. And what I found that, that I'm gonna start my eyes here, uh, basically real similar to where my gun is. Now I'm gonna pick the flash up peripherally from underneath the gun. Uh, the bird's gonna barely get by me. I'm gonna ease right up to the back end and, and that's how I'm gonna approach this shot. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and look at a view pair real quick. Pull. Okay, so for this shot, my, my hold point is gonna be very close to my break point, just maybe about 10% down the line from where I'm gonna be shooting the target. The reason for that is so that I can move my gun at a minimal distance. Um, my focal point, I'm gonna come all the way down the line and actually look at this plate right here. If you can see that, that's where the target comes off, this Primatic machine. Uh, so my eyes are going to be down here and I'm watching the target come up to my gun and I'm going to shoot it right at the top uh, and, tr and try to keep the target uh, below my gun. Oh. The important thing I want to want to recommend here is that the closer you get to the target and the less visibility that you have with the with the target under your gun, the more you're going to want to shoot like Brad. All right, guys. Here we've got a Shondell. What a Shondell is, a, a, it could be a standard made of any type of target that's basically thrown on its side looping, typically. Uh, they can be flatter and straight line. Here we've got a relatively high looping Shondell. And what gets complicated here, David, the line's forever in transition. Right, yeah. Uh, kind of the way that I shoot it is I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it down into three spots. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Basically, when it's going up, 
when it's crossing in the middle, and when it's falling. And uh, if I can, I generally like to shoot it in two of those spots. So the, either going up when it's kind of in a flat line or dropping when it's kind of in a flat line. Yeah, I at times will choose that stall. Sometimes yeah. it'll hold that, that in the flat center. line in the center for long enough to be comfortable. Uh, it, it depends. If it doesn't look good on the way up, if it's, you know, quartering into me and I like it as it gets closer during that flat line maybe, um, you know, sometimes on the drop they're falling further and you're right. looking to attack that up line or, or that flat line. So there's a, you know, different choices. I think both of us are going to uh, uh, agree that whether you break the bird on the way up, flat, or on the way down, it depends on what the shot is given there. So you've right. got to be able to do all three. Now my style is a little bit different in terms of what Dave, you know, what I'm trying to do with the bird and what David's trying to do with the bird. What I'm trying to do on the way, whether it's up flat or down, what I'm what I'm understanding is this line is always in transition. Let's just say I'm going to shoot this bird on the way down. Well, when I get to the bird, it's on the way up. I'm going to get the gun in position into a position that's going to be what the line is going to become in the break zone. So as the bird's traveling up, I'm trying to get in the gun and on the bird to the spot that's going to become the line when I've chosen to fire. Now the bird's going up, I'm going up with it. The bird's flattening out, I'm flattening with it. As it comes down, I'm coming down with it. So for me, the gun and bird are always going the exact same speed and direction from the time I get there all the way through the shot. I mean, basically what I'm going to be doing for the shot is if it's going up, I'm going to, I'm going to simplify it down to that's the only thing I'm doing with the target. Uh, I'm just making you move on the way up. Basically, kind of like how I shot a teal at the other stage we worked on. If it's dropping, I'm, I'm inserting my gun after the roll and I'm going to allow my body to bend down and stay with the bird. But exact same way as Brad described, my move is connected with the bird and I'm, I'm synchronized, harmonized with it the whole way through. We're both doing the exact same thing. I think the major difference here is I like to spend a little more time in the gun with the bird. So I've got to be able to move through a transitioning line. Right. Your move's a little short and so David can kind of break it into one consistent line. Uh, both work well, but to each his own. Pull up. So the difference is going to be, I'm not going to make the same move in the beginning as I did on that shot. Pull. Yeah, I think uh, if I attack that bird on the way up, it's gonna be very similar to you. Yeah. I mean, shooting the bird on the way down is gonna look a lot different. So we'll take a look and see what the shot cam shows us. First one on the way up, pull. And we'll do the second one on the way down. I'm going to connect a bit later, but I am going to go up flat and then come down with this bird. Pull. That's how we do it. I'm going to ask uh, David and Brad some of the questions that we often get asked in our comments. What kind of chokes? Uh, what kind of chokes are you guys using in your guns? Uh, for me, I shoot uh, Rhino Rhino choke. That's the brand I use. Uh, the constriction is 25,000. It's pretty much an IMOD. Uh, for me, I want a tight enough choke that I'm not going to run into a target that I don't feel confident with that choke. I don't change chokes, so. Um, my choke's going to handle the farthest shot I expect to see. All right, so top and bottom, same. 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 What about you, David? So I actually shoot a, a, a fixed choke barrel on my Parazzi. Uh, my, my chokes are fixed at 28 thousandths on each barrel, uh, and I basically do that mainly for the balance of the gun and the pointability. So in my gun, if you look down the barrel, they taper down to a nice small point instead of bulge out for, for uh, with chokes at the end. and. You know, I can I can really influence the way that the gun moves that way. And chokes really, if I'm going to point the gun in the right spot, I'm going to miss by feet rather than 
few inches. I'd also rather take the time to think about my plan than think about what what choke am I going to use. Yeah, that's my big thing. I think I'm going to miss just as many or more targets changing chokes because I don't have a good plan. Yeah. Versus with a tight choke, if I make a good shot, it's breaking. I, I have control over that. Right. Maybe I miss one by an inch or so. You know, if I'd have changed chokes, I'd have hit it. But if I make a good shot on that, I'd hit it anyway. That's yeah. kind of my theory. So both use the same chokes, top and barrel. Yours is fixed at a little bit tighter choke, and then yours is just, just a hair wider. Yeah, pretty close. So three, you're, you're talking about... Three, yeah, it's basically the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, David, so we get a lot of questions about how guns pattern. Mm -hmm. um, talk us through if that is important to you, what your gun does. Yeah, so... I mean, the way that I shoot, I believe and teach, uh, you know, shotgun shooting, especially in sporting, is, is a, you're playing off your hand-eye coordination and the point ability of the gun. Uh, you really need to know where you're, uh, you know, you really have to have a gun that shoots where you're looking. Um, in terms of percentages, you know, 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, uh, it's not too important if, as a general rule. Uh, in my teaching, though, I do like to check eye dominance uh, to, to influence how far I would like a student's eye to be over the uh, rib. But I, I'm influencing uh, point of impact by bringing, separating the eye and the barrel, uh, not by changing the fit of the gun uh, or the rib. So, um, you know, essentially it's very minimal in our game if you're learning how to shoot this game the right way. It's because sporting clays are so much different than trap and skeet where, you know, that game is very mechanical in terms of you're always shooting the same birds. You can learn gaps and leads and stuff like that. Where in sporting clays, I mean, you're, every time you go out and shoot a course, it's totally different. So that's less valuable. The game's got to become hands and eyes. It's yeah. got to be a feel-based and a vision-based game. Um, so what happens when people are talking those numbers, 50, 50, 60, 40, most guns, a regular sporting guns, built the, the pattern at 60, 40. Um, now, you know, when people ask that, that's just the gun. That's not how the gun even relates to me. What's important to me is that my eye is up on top of the gun so the gun's not, you know, restricting my vision, taking my eyes away from the bird. Uh, so where that gun patterns for me is right in the middle of the target. My eyes are telling my hands where to go. Now, technically, my eyes up above that bead. The gun may be hits a little high, some people would say, but that, but that's just kind of a, honestly, it's a nonsensical way of thinking. It doesn't, it doesn't factor in anything. I, I know David right there, his head is that high away from the gun. He doesn't miss high. I hear guys all the time, I took my head off the gun, that's why I missed high. It, it's not why you missed high. You took your eyes off the bird. You know, there was something in movement or something in tension. If my eye's on the bird, my, my eye's guiding my hand. Yeah, you know, that's simple. For sure. David, we're in a station here that we walked in and it says that there's a standard clay and an international. Right. Can you talk us through the difference there? All right, guys, what we've got here is a relatively close and slow pair. Okay, so the biggest difference between how Brad shoots this and how I shoot it is basically on the first bird, I'm just gonna stay in front of it, have a little bit less gun movement. To sign up for more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel below, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or subscribe to our exclusive email list at the bottom of our website.